Hello, this is Rick Malava. My nickname in the forums is CTV Ram, with uh, simply my uh, how-to tip for one of our users, uh, N88TRNator. Uh, he wants to create this wrench here with this twisted handle. Um, recently, I've been work I was working on a project where I had to create a safety wire, that, which was a twisted wire that follows a path. Um, and so the uh, the helix primitive didn't work out well for me because the the portion that was twisted this part right here in my case actually needed to follow a path uh, now because your handle the twisted portion here is straight you can actually do this with simply with a polygon primitive helix to create this twisted portion right here and then I would create a CV curve that follows this looped part and goes from the face of the helix that ends here to the face of the helix that ends here and then create two more CV, uh, CV curves one that goes from the face of the helix that ends here up to this gripper and the other part that goes from the face of this helix up to this gripper and then what you can do is take the face uh, the face from say this helix right here and extrude it along this path and then just take and connect the uh, you know the, the, the what what will happen is you'll extrude along this path and you'll have a gap here at this end and you just connect these up and then once again you take the face of the helix at this end and extrude it along this path to here and this face you do the same thing and extrude it along the CV curve that you created here up to here and in fact for this threaded portion you can also use the uh, helix primitive uh, I would just extend the uh, uh, or extrude the face of this helix or just pull it out to here and then create a uh, another helix that goes from here to here with this thread pattern on it delete all the interfaces uh, and then attach that uh, this surface that you create here to this uh, to the end of this uh, uh, helix that uh, the face of this helix here so you can do this whole thing with just a helix but I just can't resist the, the opportunity to uh, to go over just another example of where you can uh, use this more general workflow to create any t uh, twisted pair of wires that follows any path you want. So uh, so with that, let me jump into, uh, I've got a little uh, link here to another video that I did. Uh, one of the users wanted to create a uh, sort of an atom effect where he had a, uh, the orbital of the atom was uh, was sort of this helical path that you see here in this uh, this tutorial here but this is a closed path so this is an example of how you can use this method to create a twisted pair of wires that follows a closed path what I like about your uh, your problem here is you've got uh, you've got an open path so I, I start here I'm gonna go around this twist I'm gonna come around this loop I'm gonna go through the twist and I'm gonna end over here so it's an open path so I thought it would be a good example of showing that plus it's another opportunity to give uh, folks a, a look at how to use uh, NURBS curves and create NURB surfaces you can also convert this into a poly surface when we're all done but um, let's get started so this is what we're gonna end up with right here um, so I just did this really quickly, but if I hide the surface here, I'll just delete it. I don't need it anymore. Uh, you can see what I did is I created this uh, this twisted, and this is an example of what you can do for the helix as well. Just create a helix that represents this part of the curve from from here, you know, helix from where my cursor is now to where my cursor is over here or my pointer. And then then what you do is you're just going to create a CV curve that goes from here to here and a CV curve that goes from here to here and then you just basically extrude the face of the helix down this curve and this curve and then likewise you're going to take uh, the face of one end of the helix over here and just extrude it around a CV path up to here and then just connect these two ends up when you're done so you can do this whole thing with uh, with simply with a helix and three CV curves uh, but uh, for this case, let's uh, let's actually start from scratch and see how you can do this uh, in a more general way. So I'm going to hide everything I've got right here. I'm gonna take everything that I have right here, and I'm just going to group it all up and hide it. We'll start right from scratch. Okay. So now what we'll do? The first thing I need is um, I need a path to create this twisted part along. So I'm going to go from the top view here, and like I said, your path is straight, so this actually, you know, this is probably overkill for this this particular problem, but uh, it's a good technique to know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a CV, or actually this is an EP curve for this particular case. I just need the straight curve that goes from approximately here 
just using X and clicking where I want the CV curve to start and end. Um, CV curves are, or EP curves are great for uh, straight lines because you can just use two points. You don't have to worry about uh, extra points. So I'm going to create this guy and I'm going to kind of center it in the middle. And uh, just because I don't like two vertices lines, I'm going to always, and just because I'm in the habit of always rebuilding my CV curves. When you work with nerves, uh, it's always a good idea to rebuild your curves. Um, this way you absolutely know that the parameterization is correct. Uh, and without going into parameterization, it just basically divides this up into e even integer uh integer numbers, which uh, ensures that when you extrude things along them or you work with them, they be behave in a uniform manner. But uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rebuild this curve. I keep it up on my uh, shelf because I use the NURBS a lot. But if you hold the right key down or the space bar down and then you go to Edit Curves, you can, uh, you can get to Rebuild Curves from this menu as well. It's also up in... Uh, Oh my goodness, I don't use these menus very much. And here it is, Edit Curves, right up here on the uh, Surfaces menu. All right, so uh, let's build this thing. So I'm going to take, and I got this curve. I want to rebuild it. Uh, 10 is probably going to be too much. Let's see what 6 looks like. Um, it's really not important for this, but that's a nice even distribution, so we'll go with that. I uh, rebuild this uniform. I like to go from 0 to spans. This will give me integer values from 0 to however many spans there are. If you go 0 to 1, you'll get fractional values, and I just, I just my brain doesn't wrap around that as easily as whole numbers. Uh, and if the curve had twists and turns in it and I wanted to maintain the tangents, I usually make sure I keep that turned on ends. Just make sure that your endpoints are maintained. And then I'm going to create six bands. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's as easy as that. Uh, get used to this. If you're working with NURBS, you rebuild curves a lot. So now I've got this path. Now the trick is I want to take and I want to create a twisted, two twisted paths, two twisted wires that go along this path, right? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a polygon primitive cube. And I'm going to draw this guy out kind of over here. And I'm going to make it so that it's roughly actually for this case, I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to go with create a polygon primitive cylinder. This way I can actually draw it out and sort of see that the diameter is about the same diameter as the wire there. And then I only need to, this to be a, a box, so I'm going to go into the channel box here for this guy. Once it's actually created, I had to give it some height. And I'm going to just change the number of segments to four, or, or subdivision axes to four. So basically it creates the cube. Um, so, But it's in this diamond pattern, which gives me an idea of the the diameter of the wire a little better than the cube did. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to center its pivot, and I'm going to snap it to this curve here, holding the uh, C and the middle mouse button and then gesturing over the curve. And then I'm going to take this uh, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. All right? And I only really need the face. I don't want the whole thing. Uh, so I'm just going to take all of these faces and delete them and then just uh, come to perspective mode and see which direction. Okay, good. I want to make sure that the I turn two-sided lighting off generally. So now I can see which direction this thing is facing. And I don't need these, uh, these internal edges so I'm just going to take this vertex right here and holding the shift key down or the control key down and the right mouse button, I'm going to go uh, two edges and just delete those edges. And it's going to do that to me. Oops, let's do it this way. Just hit the delete key. And that does what I want. Okay, long way to get there. So now, uh, I don't like the direction this is facing, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to reverse the uh, faces on the, norm on the uh, polygon there, which is under normals reverse. And now you see it's facing the right way, but it's not at the end of the, the line yet. So let's uh, center the pivot again. 
and then let's curve snap it holding C middle mouse and then drag it to the end of the line here. Now let's see what direction this line is facing. I'm going to select the line, go to control vertices, and you can see there's a box here and then a U, and U is the direction that the line is going. So I want this thing to kind of be at the start of the line, which is where it's at right now. It's on the box. Okay. So now what I'm going to do very quickly is uh, grab this, whoops, go to object. Sometimes it's easier to do that. Uh, select the, the shape and the path, and then just uh, hit uh, the extrude, which I also have up here on my shelf, but you can get to it with uh, edit meshes, or edit mesh uh, extrude right there. So I'm just going to extrude that, and it extrudes along the whole path, and it I made the wrong choice of uh, flipping that uh, that normal. So what I'm going to do is just select this thing and I'm going to reverse its normal so it's facing the right way. Now once I create this, I want to I want to twist this right, but I need more faces. Uh, I need more segments. So I'm going to come down here to this extrude and I'm going to change the uh, number of divisions to say match what I had, which was 6. That's not going to be enough, actually. This has got to twist a lot, so I'm going to say 20. Okay, it looks like a lot of segments, but this, this we're going to pull a curve off of this thing, and it's going to twist, and so I'm going to need enough segments for this to work. You'll see in a second what I mean. I'm going to take this edge from here to here before I do anything, and this edge from here to here. Now you can kind of get an idea of where I'm going. I now have two curves that follow this path, because of this uh, box I've extruded along it. Uh, and all I have to do is pull these curves off of this so I can go, um, I don't know when they added this feature in Maya, but you can go to uh, uh, Modify, Convert, Polygon Edges to Curve, and I've got mine set to just make sure it's a dust guess and cubic and hit Apply. And uh, so now what I've done is I've created a curve Whoops, I can only do it one at a time, so pick this one and just hit the G key to repeat that. So now if I take this box and I hide it with Control H, right, you see what I've got are these two curves that are dependent on this box. When I pick the box over here in the outliner, which is now hidden, you see the lines turn this magenta color, so they have a, a, a relationship or a, a connection to the box. And if I go to its extrude face node, and here's where the, the cool part of the trick comes in, and I go down to this twist value and I start to twist it, or start to scrub it, you see the lines I pulled off now, it only lets me go to 180 uh, this way, but if we keep twisting this thing in multiples of 180, which makes sure that the, the ends of the curves always end up horizontal. So uh, 180, let's try 360. Okay, and you can see that's going to give me one twist. And this has got what looks like to me like three twists in it. So let's go, uh, what's 180 plus 360? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 360 and 180, 360. Plus, I'm, I'm clicking on my calculator off screen here, 540, since my brain doesn't seem to be working this morning, 45 or 540. And see, there we go, that looks, that looks like it's going to be pretty good. It's, it's twisting in the opposite direction of this one, but um, I can see I'm going to have the right number of twists, so that's going to be pretty good. So the next thing I need to do is, is uh, create a shape to extrude along this path, right? So we're going to come over here from the top view again. And now I'm going to create another uh, shape, but this time I'm going to create a NURBS circle right here and just drag it out so it's the size of the wire. Just that easy. Go to the perspective view again. And now all I have to do, and eight segments is, is perfect for this. It's fine. Um, you could probably get away with, with fewer. But uh, let's cons uh, assume we're doing high res here. Now, before I, well, I can do this very quickly. Now I can take this this shape and this path, and I can just come down here and go to Surfaces Extrude, and I'll show you the settings in a second. And there you go. And now if I took this and extruded along this path, we'd have the twisted part created. And, of course, the uh, surface is coming out reversed. 
uh, which is easy to correct afterwards. But let's create the rest of the handle that we need first. Okay, so let's go to the top view. And now we've got the twisted part created. Now let's create the looped part and the open parts. So let's do another create CV curve tool. Right? And I'm just going to create a curve. And I don't care how many CVs I create, I just want to follow this path. Right? Because rule number one of working with NURBS, you're always going to rebuild your curve. So just get the shape right. All right, now I can come in and uh, just a general note, the fewer cur the fewer verts you use, oops, the fewer verts you use, uh, sometimes the easier it is to actually get the shape you want. Uh, if you get too many curves, you're going to get a lot of lumps and bumps, but that's following that path pretty well. Uh, and now, once again, we'll do the same thing very quickly over here, create CV curve, and just sort of see where this one ends. And then give it the original path, and I can actually just jump way over to here to that for the end. Okay, and then hit return to drop the tool. Hit G to repeat the last command, and then I'm kind of trying to be aware of this uh, when it comes out of here I want it to sort of follow this bend here so I, I wanted to put a couple CVs closer together up here to get that initial bend so now like I said now I have uh, these CV curves I've got the the twisted pair I've got this part this part and this part so now it's just a matter of assembling all of these together and since I used multiples of 180 remember these guys ended up horizontal so I'm perfectly in line I just need to connect things up so now what I'm going to do is pick this curve and this curve and then go to edit curves and do an attach right go to its options and make sure you've got blend turned on and then do the connection there and you see that it connected that up nice and smoothly to this part of the helix now uh, let me get rid of the this and the and the reference image just so you can see this a little bit better okay so let's do the same thing let's take this guy and this guy and I could just hit the G key again uh, which would bring this guy up with the options and just hit apply and there you go so now I've got that done now come over here pick this guy you know before I do this I'm gonna go all the way back because I broke my own rule which is repeat after me always rebuild your curves so I'm gonna this would would have worked um, it's just sometimes when you work with uh, curves oops I didn't go back far enough I'm talking too much let's uh, hide that guy okay there we are. we're back where we started again you know you see that the distance between these two CVs and then the next two CVs are kind of close because I just sort of randomly went around this curve let's let's make this a little more uniform and we can also sometimes reduce the number of CVs that we've got in here but we'll see how many we need I'm gonna go in and once again I do this so often it's up on my shelf but you can get to it from edit curves uh, rebuild curves options right and you go into the rebuild curve options and I'm gonna make this six as I can definitely tell is not gonna be enough so let's try let's try eight right that's not enough you see the shape got all messed up so I'm gonna just hit Z to undo that and I'm going to uh, also sometimes it's a good idea to just rebuild the curve with the number of spans that are currently in it right that did it initially also it's a sometimes a good idea just to see how many we've got we've got 12 um, I could probably get away with two less so let's uh, uncheck check uh, number of spans click tangent to make sure it maintains the same curvature and then hit uh, 10 spans and we'll see if it'll hold up okay that's good so all we need is 10 right and then we see we got this density in here which which uh, I'm gonna keep because I want to have that smoothness but you could probably reduce these a little bit as well but these are already uniform because we rebuilt them uh, initially so I'm gonna come in here and for this I can tell I'm only gonna need at most maybe six um, now here's an example here's an example of where it might go crazy 
no, did that. Well, it did. See, it went wacky. It shot way out here and came back. If this happens to you when you're rebuilding your curves, and this is why this is a good video, I think, for folks that are just, because nerves are kind of becoming a lost art. Let me uh, undo that. So if it ever happens to you, you rebuild your curve and it does something strange like that, um, what you do is first rebuild the curve with the number of spans and turn tangents off. Right? Boom. Now, once you've got it rebuilt with number of spans, let's see if it held its shape up pretty well. It did not. Let's turn that off. If that doesn't work, do it with CVs. Okay. Rebuild it with CVs. That'll build it with the exact same CV layout. It won't try to distribute them uniformly. Once it's done that, then turn off CVs, turn on tangents, and now try to rebuild it. And you see, oh, and you see it made me a liar. So it just doesn't like six because it's probably no, that's not a problem. Let me uh, let me see what's going on here. One second. Okay, I'm back. And here's another thing that happens. So first, try to rebuild. Uh, uh, this is why people get frustrated with with nerves. But this this is nothing that's too hard to fix. What you want to do is, if it goes crazy, first thing to try to do is rebuild it with CVs. Okay, that'll turn everything else off. Once it's rebuilt with CVs. Then come back out, and we tried to rebuild it with six, and it went crazy, if you recall. Um, so what you, what I did was I rebuilt it. If it didn't like six, just rebuild it with something smaller, like four. So now it rebuilds with four, and it holds its shape nice. Now this is really all the CVs I need for this path, but I'm going to just show you that I can get it to rebuild with six. So now if I bump it up to six and hit, there we go. So it, it built it with six. So we'll try this one. If I build it with six, it does the same thing. It goes crazy, right? So hit Z to undo. Come here, rebuild it with CVs, right? Hit apply. Now come up here, turn CVs off, try to rebuild it again with six. It goes crazy again. So hit Z to undo. Doesn't like six. Let's try four. Just make it smaller so that it can it can digest it. Now that it's able to build it with four, I know I can come in here and hit six, and it will let me build it with six. Okay. So this is just the kind of stuff you have to learn to do with nerves. Okay. So now that I've got all that, now I just need to connect all this up like we did uh, way back when we started this. So I'm going to pick these two curves. I'm going to go to uh, Edit Curves and hit Attach. Okay. And then make sure when I do the attach. Uh, edit curves, attach, bring up the options. Okay, just make sure that when you do the attach, you're at 50% and you blend. So I'm going to take this guy and this guy and hit G, and I'm going to hit this guy and this guy, and I'm going to hit G, and I'm going to take this guy and this guy, and I'm going to hit G. Okay, and then if you have to, if you want to, you can come in here, like I don't like this kind of warbling I'm getting here, so I'm going to take this guy from the top view. And I'm just going to sort of smooth that out. Take this guy from the top view and just sort of smooth that out. So that transition looks a little bit. I kind of like the, the twisting in here because that's similar to what we have in the, in the picture. But there we go. Now you see you've got this curve. And it doesn't even have to have uniform CV distribution. We've got nice clean distribution on these ends in this loop. And tightness in here, or higher density in here, where we're going to need the resolution. And now it's just a matter of taking uh, uh, this path that I created for the shape of the wire and this path that I just created and then coming down here to surface extrude and go to its option box and you just want to make sure that all the radio buttons on the right side here are checked. We're going to create nerves but you could create this as a polygon surface uh, and then just hit apply and there you go and now you have to do and this is done if it comes out in the wrong surface direction just come here to uh, surfaces uh, I'm sorry, edit surfaces and reverse surface direction, which once again, I keep up here on my toolbar since I use it a lot, and just reverse the surface direction. And uh, this actually brings up the options for me. You can uh, usually just pick U or V will do it. Uh, U is the default, and if I just click that, there you go. And if I bring the uh, this guy back, there you go. There's the twisted part of the of the handle. So 
that's how you can use uh, this method to uh, create a twisted pair of wire that follows any path you want. In this case, it was a straight path, but I just wanted to go over some of the uh, issues of working with NURBS. So hopefully you'll see how to create your CV curves, how to rebuild your CV curves, and then how to extrude things along them. You can also now come in and do a modify convert uh, NURBS to polygon if you want to convert this into polygon at this point. So there you go. This has been Rick Malava with uh, or for simplymaya.com, and I, I hope this helps you out, Nader, and anybody else who might want to use this technique.